Welcome to the forge, my wanton wildlings. I'm your creepsmith, and I hope you like my work. Tonight's humble offering is a cautionary tale once again from the realm of science. Gateway of the Mind, author unknown. In 1983, a team of deeply pious scientists conducted a radical experiment in an undisclosed facility. These scientists had theorized that a human without access to any senses or ways to perceive stimuli would be able to perceive the presence of God. They believed that the five senses clouded our awareness of eternity, and without them, a human could actually establish contact with God by thought. An elderly man who claimed to have nothing left to live for was the only test subject to volunteer. To purge him of his senses, the scientists performed a complex operation in which every sensory nerve connection to the brain was surgically severed. Although the test subject retained full muscular function, he could not see, hear, taste, smell, and had no tactile sense at all. With no possible way to communicate or even sense the outside world, he was alone with his thoughts. Scientists monitored him as he spoke aloud about his state of mind in jumbled, slurred sentences that he couldn't even hear. After four days, the man claimed to be hearing hushed, unintelligible voices in his head. Assuming it was an onset of psychosis, the scientists paid little attention to the man's concerns. In another two days, the man cried that he could hear his dead wife speaking with him, and even more, he could communicate back. The scientists were intrigued, but were not convinced until the subject started naming dead relatives of those present. He repeated personal information to them that only their dead spouses or parents would have known. At this point, a sizable portion of the staff left the study. After a week of conversing with the deceased through his thoughts, the subject became distressed, saying that the voices were overwhelming. In every waking moment, his consciousness was bombarded by hundreds of voices that refused to leave him alone. He frequently threw himself against the wall, trying to elicit a pain response. He begged these scientists for sedatives so he could escape the voices by sleeping. This tactic worked for three days until he started having night terrors. The subject repeatedly said that he could see and hear the deceased in his dreams. Only a day after that, the subject began to scream and claw at his non-functional eyes, hoping to sense something in the physical world. The hysterical subject now said that the voices of the dead were deafening and hostile, telling him of hell and the end of the world. At one point, he yelled, No heaven! No forgiveness! For five hours straight. He continually begged to be killed, but the scientists were convinced that he was close to establishing contact with God. After another day, the subject could no longer form coherent sentences. Seemingly mad, he started to bite off chunks of flesh from his arm. The scientists rushed into the test chamber and restrained him to a table so he couldn't kill himself. After a few hours of being tied down, the subject halted his struggling and his screaming. He stared blankly at the ceiling as teardrops silently streaked across his face. For two weeks, he had to be manually rehydrated due to his constant crying and refusal to eat or drink. Eventually, he turned his head, and despite his blindness, he made focused eye contact with one of the scientists for the first time in the study. He whispered, I've spoken with God. And he has abandoned us. And then, his vital signs stopped. The cause of death remains unknown. Now, while I have great respect for those with the curiosity and drive to interrogate the undiscovered, it is helpful to know the right questions to ask. Humanity has always wondered about what's on the other side of the veil between life and death. But another question to consider is why that veil exists, and whether the answers are worth the cost. 
Stay scary, my wildlings, and make the most of your nights.